silent one, then we'll be live. So in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, January 10th, 2022. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the maryland open meetings act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting as a result today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast in order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as from requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slate, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Jose? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Ms. Hen? Present. Mr. Kuhn? Mr. Offerman. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Ms. Anderson. Dr. Boswell McComas. Ms. Charlie Green. Dr. Yarborough. Dr. Zarchin. Present. Ms. Howie. Ms. Rung for Sangaroon. Present. Dr. Jones. Dr. Roberts. Mr. Dixit. Present. Mr. Patillo. Present. Mr. Saris. Present. Dr. Grimm. Present. Ms. Hetzler. Present. Mr. Plate. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Yes, good afternoon. This is Dr. Wheatley Phillip, present. Thank you. Anyone okay. else? Joanne English Calvert, present. Good afternoon, Patricia Mustafer, present. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Slade, and welcome everybody. Happy New Year, and welcome to the first Building and Contracts Committee meeting for 2022. Mr. Saris, please state your name for the record and proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm George Saris, Executive Director of Fiscal Services. The first item that we have, Contract CWA 108-22, Restorative Practices Professional Development. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Joes? Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, I'd like to understand why this contract is necessary. Um, we've implemented restorative practices for some time. If staff could speak to the necessity of continued professional development. Thank you for that question. This is Mike Zarchin, and I am joined with Patricia Mustafer. Uh, so the focus of this contract is professional development. Uh, it supports our compass pathway to excellence focus area number two, safe and supportive environment. And the professional development is critical to the restorative uh, practices. Ongoing development, it's something that you continually need to work through with other SEL practices 
Um, that's why we've, we've requested this, and I will turn to Ms. Mustafer to share more information if you would like. Absolutely. Um, in uh, late 2017, we then um, established um, a cohort of trainers. Um, at that time, there was approximately 37 trainers. Um, of which we've had turnover in those trainers. Uh, we, to this date, have 20 active trainers, but we continue to expand the practice um, and look to the experts in the field for coaching um, and to um, offer us um, professional learning to expand our practice as trainers. Um, as you may or may not be aware, restorative practices is a continuum. Um, and so we continue to grow within that continuum um, and as well as um, research states that to truly the fidelity of implementation is across the four to five year pathway. Um, so continuing to grow that in a system this large with consultation um, from the experts in the field is the focus of this contract. Thank you. And do we have data that support the continued investment in restorative practices? I know this is something the board has asked for before. Can you speak to that, please? I, I certainly can. Um, when we we initially started implementing and training, um, we have trained roughly um, a little over 2,500 individuals. Now that's just on the full continuum. Um, we embed actually restorative practices um, through the continuum and the continuum starts with how we use our language through impromptu conversations, through circling up for community, right into formal conferencing. And so we have utilized that um, and continue to coach and utilize that um, information across the continuum. So use and implementation, when we first started this, uh, we definitely we surveyed folks as post um, information within the training cycle and then we did we did pre and we did post and what we found was reflectively that um, circles are being used to build community um, some monthly some weekly some daily for a rate of 60 roughly 63 percent um, impromptu conversations um, is being used roughly at around 93 percent and effective questions are being used um, roughly at around 89 percent um, and then effective statements at 90 percent and that's all part of the training um, that we utilize our experts to give us guidance on so those are those are the estimates we have from post uh, professional learning surveys thank you Ms. mustafer my last question so we know it's being used have we surveyed parents to find out if they perceive that it's having an impact on um, improving the positive school climate that we hope to achieve in the compass? Um, thank you for offering that. That is, that's not something we've pursued um, as we've been trying to really build the capacity of staff, but certainly a suggestion and one of our next steps that we see moving this forward. Um, but as we all know, that's, you know, making sure that we have the careful language and the understanding um, to continue to expand and get that feedback is critically important. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sears, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. Uh, the next item, LLY 411-22, Consulting and Technical Services Plus. This is a new cooperative contract for consulting and technical services for the Division of Human Resources. Approval is requested for a six year, three month term with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $400,000. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saros, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item, JME 502-20, uh, automatic vehicle location or AVL system. Uh, this is a contract modification uh, for the continued use of an uh, AVL system for the Office of Transportation, uh, we are requesting additional spending authority of $200,000 uh, 
uh, bringing the total contract spending authority to $550,000 with one awarded contractor approved by the board in July 2020. Thank you, Mrs. Sarris. Committee members, any questions? I have one, Ms. Joes. Go ahead, Ms. Hens. Thank you. Um, Mr. Terrace, is Nick Track the sole contractor um, for this work? Yes, Next Track. Uh, we originally cooperated with Baltimore County government on this, and they decided not to rebid the contract, but rather to uh, maintain their relationship as a uh, single source provider because we've all <clears throat> been using this next track system for a number of years so that's why um, we are coming back uh, to the board um, and the really good news is that sometime in 2022 we uh, hope to move away from this provider when we complete the uh, the radio communication system for our buses, which will include, among other things, this vehicle locator feature. And uh, that project was delayed um, due to the COVID uh, limited access to the buildings. It, it uh, slowed down a lot of the FAA licensure uh, processes. Um, but we've com we've completed the equipment installation in over a thousand buses. The FAA has done flyovers of the antenna location, and now we have to do some further uh, fiber optic installations and install the tower and and do testing and training over the summer. So we're hopeful by the end of this year. Uh, there will be no further need for this service. Thank you. And and can you speak to how this relates to the software piece of this in, in terms of um, a web portal in that parents would be able to track the location of vehicles? Um, I know well, there's another I, project that's related, or is that not a feature that's supported by this equipment? Yeah, that was a feature we'd hoped to gain with the stop arm proposal. And I think that that um, will have to be considered separately. I don't believe that there is such a feature included with this, with the radio system, but perhaps Mr. Corns might know. Or Mr. Patillo or Ms. Dr. Grimm but I'm not aware of such. George, you're correct. This is a uh, basic ABL for our white fleet and our buses. It has no connection or connectivity for a parent. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Any more questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Sarris, please proceed with the next contract. Okay, the next four contracts are uh, emergency contracts which uh, address the uh, logistics and production and uh, that uh, supply interruptions that we've had uh, in the economy, much related to the pandemic. So the first item is GDA 315-22, uh, disposable food trays. This is a new emergency contract for recyclable disposable food trays for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Uh, we're requesting a five-month contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $500. $25,000. We'll maintain our existing contracts, but we need some additional sources for these materials. Thank you, Mrs. Sarris. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, can you proceed with the next contract, yeah. Mrs. Sarris? Thank you. The next item, CWA 110-22, food product 
breakfast kits. And this is a new emergency contract for food products for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. We are requesting a one year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $88,128 uh for the for 1296 cases of breakfast kits thank you mr Sarris. committee members any questions hearing none mr Sarris, can you proceed with the next contract thank you uh the next item asi 814-22 another food product chicken calzones and breakfast sandwich. Uh, This is a new emergency contract for food products for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services, and we're requesting a five month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $104,314 for 600 cases of up to 600 cases of chicken calzones and 489 cases of breakfast sandwiches. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, could you proceed with the next contract, Mr. Sarris? Thank you. Um, JBO 707-22 Food Product Empanadas. This is a new emergency contract for food products for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services and we are requesting a five month contract with one recommended bidder and spending authority of $124,000. And I have learned what an empanada is and we may need up to 1300 cases of them. Thank you, Mrs. Sarris. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Mr. Jarris, I have a question for Mr. George. George, we in the budget meeting last week, we talked about how the foods and nutrition is a, had been a self-sustaining department and the money, the revenues that they collected from the sale of different food items went to pay for, you know, their expenses, went to cover their expenses. Now that we're pretty much everybody's getting a free meal, on these food items, so we're paying for all of those out of the operating budget with the understanding that there's not going to be any sort of revenue to help recoup these expenses, correct? Yes, we're paying for them out of the the food services operating budget. And um, I know that we have Ms. Hetzler here, who's the new director, and I think that the reimbursement program this year um, may be more favorable than in prior years. And we're hopeful that uh, by the end of the year, the fund will be uh, in a fairly stable position. So Ms. Hessler, if I'm correct, or if not, you may correct me. Thank you. That is correct. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Joes? Yes, go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. I have one um, that applies to the, these last three contracts. Um, the comment we received said if, if these um, food items are well received, they'll they'll be purchased or become um, part of the permanent, I suppose, lineup of, of menu offerings. Um, Can staff speak to how these will be evaluated and what types of feedback and from whom will be gathered to determine the success? This is Jamie. The um, these specific contracts are simply the, you know, just for the emergency procurement. Um, If they were to move to be, you know, an ongoing purchase, we would likely go through the formal proposal process. Um, Joanne is on the line if she wants to kind of chime in and and talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, we will be evaluating the student acceptability of the product as well as um, how well the product holds up. Um, 
and how well the schools can handle it. That is a, a typical procedure that we follow with um, all of our products. Yeah, we, we test these on ourselves before we uh, ask the students to do so, and I've participated in some of those tests. And then we, we collect feedback from the students yeah. before they're launched as well. What about afterwards? Um, can, can someone speak to that once they are implemented? Yes, yeah, so um, this is Joanne. Yes, uh, so if the product is found acceptable to the students, it will become part of the formal um, bid process. And we continue to do an evaluation um, of the product through um, gathering data as to student acceptability. Um, do, how much do the students um, select that product? Um, student feedback as well as um, the cooks in the kitchen will provide feedback as to how well the product holds once cooked. OK, thank you. Um, thank you. Quick follow up question. Um, I know that our breakfast menu was very carb heavy and we were trying to push towards more proteins. Is that part of the reasoning why we have the chicken empanadas and calzones in the breakfast? Um, menu because it, I remember it being very carb heavy and sugar heavy. Who's looking at this nutritionally? I know this is not a contract question. Um, I can address that. Those two items are actually lunch items. Um, the only item that is a, a breakfast item is the, uh, well, I'm sorry, the breakfast sandwich is a breakfast item and the breakfast meal kit is a breakfast item. Unfortunately, the um, USDA regulations are carb heavy. Um, they require us to serve so many grains and less proteins. We are looking into making more protein offerings once um, this whole supply chain frees itself up a little bit. OK, thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none. I think the next set of contracts is Mr. Dixit. Thank you, Mrs. Saris. Thank you. So good evening. This is Pete Dixit. I'm executive director for facilities management and strategic planning. The next contract is GDA 311-22 for program management and project delivery system. This request is for a five year contract. We have been using this software package eBuilder. It's a cloud based construction project management software uh, for our office of construction and improvement. We started using it in 2019 uh, and uh, has been extremely successful. The original contract was the result of a competitive solicitation that Anne Arundel County had. Uh, they have decided to go solo and have a contract with them. So we would like to do the same thing, uh, have a solo contract for five years. Uh, this provides us with the capability of communicating, uh, between improving communication between project managers, architects, contractors, and documents. Uh, uh, all of this conversation and data for future use. If there are any questions, I'll be more than glad to answer that. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Joes? Yes, go ahead, Ms. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Dixit. Good evening. Um, I just have one. I'm, I'm curious as to the, the rationale for the decision to go to a single source contract. Normally, there's there are advantage, pricing advantages. Um, with with multiple customers under a contract. Is that something that you can speak to? Sure, that's a, that's a good question. So a lot of these software packages, while different companies offer that, when we started with, uh, we communicated with several different vendors and looked at uh, the software package that meets our needs. And what our team found 
that eBuilder has everything that is needed uh, for our construction uh, management function. And we started using it because we had the ability to do that by piggybacking on Arundel County. And since we started using it, uh, we find that there are a lot of other users that are doing the same thing. And we spend a lot of time in uh, training our team members uh, and they are proficient at it. There's a lot of information uh, that is already stored in that and we have gotten used to it. It has improved the efficiency of project management considerably and as you know, a lot more funding and projects are coming uh, and it is difficult to get skill set that are needed for project management out in the market. So uh, that's the rationale. If at any point after five years we find that there's a better program available, we'll definitely consider that. This is a cloud based product and uh, it is very superior quality in the judgment of our team. Thank you. And and no, I I should perhaps be clearer in my question. I no doubt the, the product is, is what we need and, and I'm not questioning that. I my question had more to do with the procurement vehicle that we're using rather than the product itself. And you may not know Anna Rundle's rationale behind um, going to a single source contract and why that prompted our need to go to a single source contract. So I was wondering if we knew why the need to change procurement vehicles and why so, that, that was no longer an option. So in, to some extent, this is a qualification based evaluation. Once you have the quality in the product, if you even if you go out in the market, different programs have different abilities and then you have to go back and retrain your employees to use another software package. And to the best of our knowledge that we have evaluated different uh, ex different packages, no other package has uh, the capability that this package has. Thank you, Mr. Dixit, um, for the response. I have used eBuilder and Primavera, and I can certify it as a much superior product. But like you said, in five years, another software could come up. Um, this product is also going to be used to approve invoices that come in and be documented and saved for future reference, right? That's correct. OK, uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sears, could you proceed with the next contract, please? So the next contract is a set of contracts for Northeast Area Middle School. It's item 9 through 22. So I'll just provide a little bit of background. As you are aware, uh, there has been a need for additional seats in the Northeast area of the county and board had approved uh, construction of a Northeast area middle school in the capital program. For the last several months uh, or maybe a couple of years, we have been in the process of uh, designing a new school with 1410 seats, which will relieve uh, the capacity issues in that part of the county. Uh, so this now the design is complete and there are 14 packages that were bid. So what you have in front of you uh, are 14 different trades uh, that comprise the construction of the school. And so uh, there is testing, site work, concrete, masonry, steel, general construction, roofing, windows, finishes, painting, food service, mechanical, electrical, and fire suppression. So we are asking board's approval for all of these 14 contracts. If you want, I can go over each and every contract, but this is what the summary is. Uh, most of these packages have more than one bid with the exception of testing and fire suppression system. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Hen, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Oz. 
Um, Mr. Dixit, what what is the next step and when do you expect we'll break ground after the board approves these packages? So that's a good question. We are all looking forward to it because as you recall, we had to wait for availability of funding and go back to get the design updated. So uh, we expect the contract to be signed within a month, hopefully. And uh, we should be seeing uh, works uh, before summer, maybe in the springtime. And it will take about three summers to complete the project. Thank you. Be beginning with testing and inspections, most likely, or? Testing and inspection is a continuous part of the process, but site work is the Great. first thing that you'll see. Great. Yes, it's very exciting. Thank you. Yes, we are very excited about too because uh, this is the first middle school construction of, for at least last 15 years that, that I, I remember. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the last item is really not a contract. It is just a uh, right of entry agreement with Baltimore County. And this is at the uh, our property located at 14, 4800 Hollins Ferry Road. And county needs, this is a bus lot and county needs access to this property to do their soil testing and to complete the structural rehabilitation. Uh, so they are requesting for legal right and our law office has reviewed this agreement and board's approval is requested. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none. Um, thank you, Mr. Dixit, for your um, thank time. You. Mm -hmm. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 23 be moved to the full board for approval. Ms. Joes, may we separate item 2A, contract CWA 108-22? Certainly, so let me then rephrase. I will entertain a motion to recommend contract 1 and 3 to 23 be moved to the full board for approval. Those in favor, please. Oh, well, I need a motion first. So um, do we have a motion? Would you please restate the motion you're requesting? So just to clarify, Ms. Hen, you you've separated item two, correct? Um, it was item 2A on the agenda, CWA 10822. So you want to, then it would be one. That's what we show in the final agenda, item one. Right, so you're separating out this contract two is LLY 411, so you have. Can you state your contract again? Because it's not the same. It's um, contract CWA-108-22. What number is that in the, the list? It's number one. Oh, so you're separating out number one, I think. Yes, please. So, okay, that's the first one restored. Okay, so do I have a motion to then move contracts two through 23 to the full board for approval? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Do I have a second? Second, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Uh, Ms. Slade, please take the, yeah, hang on just a minute. Looks like 2A is what it says. I wanna make sure I move the right contracts to the board. Okay, all right. Um, Ms. Slade, please take the roll call vote. Uh, to move contracts two through 23 to the full board for approval. Okay, Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? I'm sorry, he was absent. Mr. McMillian? Yes. 
Uh, I believe Mr. Offerman left the meeting already, so he is absent as well. Ms. Jose. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Um, that motion passes. Do I have a motion to move contract one to the full board for approval, which is um, CWA 108-22 Restorative Practices for Professional Development? I'll move that, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, I will second that. Ms. Slate, please take a roll call vote for contract one to be moved to the full board for approval. Okay, Ms. Hen? No. Mr. Kuhn is absent. Mr. McMillian? Yes. And Mr. Offerman is absent. Ms. Jose? Yes. The motion fails. Um, therefore, contract one, CWA 108 will move to the full board without the committee's approval. Do I, is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good night. Good night. Bye.